Well, hello folks, this is Sir Instructor Ron. I just want to talk to you a minute about being prepared. So, one of the things that I would tell you to do is get a good vest. Now, before we get started, go ahead and like and subscribe. And that way, well, when I upload something, you might find it interesting and get more information. So, this is a vest that I've got. Um, I use it on a lot of events. And the reason I like this vest, and you scour it in net somewhere and, and, and get one just like it or something like it, it's got a lot of pockets. So it's got a lot of external pockets and as well as internal pockets. And so you can put a lot of things on there. This, this vest will actually carry water bottles. Uh, you, it's set up to carry radios and all kinds of things. So with that said, you got all these pockets you can put things into that you just might accidentally need that you can grab in a time of emergency and you're ready to go. So some of those things would be things like, well, you might encounter rain. So um, you might want a space blanket so that you could wrap yourself in that, keep your heat in, keep the water off. Uh, one or two of those are fine. Uh, put them in, in one of your pockets. Uh, other things might be some small snacks, uh, some flashlights. One of my most favorite flashlights is this particular one is uh, waterproof and it glows in the dark. So um, it's easily found if dropped. Um, it's, it's, I think it's three meters, you know, uh, half an hour or something like that in water. So as long as it's raining, you're good to go. Even walking through a uh, a, you know, with with a flashlight in your pocket, it's it's good to go. Uh, it's not it's not going to be damaged, and again, it's uh, waterproof. So uh, it's some sort of a waterproof uh, flashlight, and um, I think it's made by uh, Pelican or one of those companies out there. I can't read it, but uh, anyways, this is a good thing to have. Uh, everything else that's in your vest, batteries or other items put them in plastic bags Ziploc bags and put them inside of your vest or in an outside pocket so the rule of thumb would be the things that you need the most you're gonna put those on the outside so I have a little flashlight here um, it's not waterproof but it's small enough that it would fit in your hand if you were using it on a very very rainy day your hand would uh, shed most of the the rain coming down so um, it's not going to be the the best thing in the world but it's a good flashlight I've, I've used it for years I, I don't worry about it but if i did worry about it and, and i had to go in the rain um, i'm probably going to be using it at night it only takes an a size battery and it's got a really good beam the thing shines like uh, 50 to, to 75 yards in my best estimation so um, you can see something far enough away that it's a good thing but if you went out and you bought the vest, I, I think these vests are going to cost you maybe 60 bucks. I don't know. Um, you can see that they're outlined and reflective of material. That way people can see you. You're nice and bright and somebody's probably not going to run you over at night. Or if you were found um, or you're lost or whatever, um, somebody's going to see that vest. If, if you fall down... Um, it's a whole lot easier for somebody to see you in one of these vests than it is um, in normal uh, street clothes. So it's a good thing. It's a good investment. I would say anybody that, that uh, goes out of the field in a, in a potentially dangerous situation, uh, maybe storm spotting and some of those chases are out there. If you have something like this that... <clears throat> already has the, the materials in it. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, your vest is good to go. You have it with you. If you break down, get a flat tire, you put this on at night, you change the tire. It's that plain. It's that simple. But it's a good measure. One of the things I did, I gave all of my kids a vest and made sure they had flashlights. So, yep, that and uh, um, a way to air up the tire because a lot of times you get a flat tire if you don't, if you do have a, um, air pump or whatever you can you know air that tire up and 
at least limp back unless the, the tire is completely blown. In that case, you're going to have to change it. But if you just have uh, an air pump, you're going to, uh, you know, pump up your tire and be on your way. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got a little bit of something going on, probably allergies in Oklahoma. Think about everybody has allergies in Oklahoma at some time. But anyways, th this is one of the things that I would highly stress, recommend. Get it all ready. Check it out. Um, even if it's hanging in your closet and something happens, if you know that there's there's flooding going on or a big tornado approaching your area, you get your vest on. Um, if you're a victim, it's a lot easier to find you a, a secret for you. Maybe get some dog snacks and put them in your, your uh, pocket too so the dogs will find you easier. Just joking. Uh, anyways, um, I've had people tell me that, you know, get dog snacks and put them in your kids' pockets if if um, they're lost in a tornado or something happens, uh, the search and rescue dogs are going to find them. Yeah, okay, um, probably works to some degree, and I've, I've trained with search and rescue dogs, but um, I don't know. I think at times it, they uh, do that with people to get the dogs uh, trained in the beginning to, to hunt people, but... Uh, Anyways, it's it's a it's a joke among a lot of people. Um, anyways, my, my point being, just do whatever you got to do to survive um, and be on top. So uh, one of the things I'll, I'll throw back at you is um, you're gonna constantly hear me preach, you know. And so those of you that don't know, I worked both the uh, 2013 um, Morn El Reno tornadoes, a search and rescue. Uh, I was there in Shawnee, which is about 40 miles um, east on I-40. Uh, they were hit with a EF-4, uh, I believe. And so I went out there and kind of helped out doing relief work. And we uh, cut logs off of uh, trees so people could get out of their, their driveways. And we passed their roofs for them with tarps and whatever. So it's the same thing. But um, if you have a ham radio especially if you're licensed. Now, a lot of people, and I can read it to you, you can look it up for yourself, but in, I think it's part 97 and uh, 403, I think is what it is. Don't quote me at that, but if you do a little Googling, you'll see that if um, there's no way to communicate, all communications are down, you can use a ham radio in case of an emergency if there's immediate threat to life and property. And that's the key. There can't be any more communications that, that are established. Everything's down. Um, so if your cell phone's not working, um, you know, and the towers are down and your landline, if you have one, many folks today don't have a landline, um, then there's a good possibility that you can use a ham radio, but to use a ham radio in case of time of emergency, um, it just doesn't cut it. There has to be no other means of communications. So if you get your ham license, it's not that hard, get a technician, um, that's the first step. Uh, there's, I think, 300, 400 questions, I don't remember to be honest with you. But just study the test questions and know those answers. Don't understand the answer, just know it's the right answer. And so I tell people that all the time. That's how I got it. I got my tech one week, went back the next week and studied one week and got my general class. And I'm not interested really at this point in an extra, but I figure within a month I, I could knock down my extra. So the way I do it is I would just study the test questions. So they're good to have in case of an emergency, but you have to understand what the definition of that emergency is. There was a guy in Tulsa that kept jumping on the repeater and interrupting a, a net with a tornado on the ground. He'd, he'd jump on and say where the tornado was. We already had people on it with uh, Tulsa Emergency Management, and this guy just kept insisting. So they asked the guy what his call sign was. He wouldn't give it. Uh, he just kept blurting out the information, there, the tornado was over here, whatever. And uh, then the guy made a uh, severe mistake. He was on uh, some uh, storm severe channel, whatever, and uh, gave out his channel, and then they had him. So they looked him up, and I uh, 
understood they gave the guy a ninety five hundred dollar ticket to my understanding so you don't want to be that guy that just picks up that radio and is going to be the instant hero uh, you need to have that licensing to use this radio um, you can listen all you want on this radio but you're not able to broadcast without a license and so uh, this is one of the most important things that you have because when all the communications go down it's we ham radio operators that are there and uh, we make communications happen ask people uh, in recent events through the last 25 years how hams have helped uh, with emergency management and one of the ways we help is we get all those people that come in they don't have communications and they need roads cleared so you know we've got to go and, and uh, with these guys and uh, you know if there's questions or whatever we can relay that information back to the EOC and they can say no uh, we, we only want to go this far or we need to go further um, whatever so there's a that's a good way to get involved is having your ham license I know people right now that have really no qualifications in emergency management but they're a ham radio operator and emergency management know that when everything goes down this radio is what's going to do the trick and so uh, with a repeater it's a signal goes out to a repeater and and uh, goes a lot further distance uh, this radio now is a superpower so to speak because now we're talking to people on this radio that can be 30 miles away so it's a real important thing to do and a lot of times in a, in a tornado event or something that's bad people are calling in and out trying to get a hold of their relatives and the best thing you can do if you have a phone is just send a a simple text to somebody don't make it elaborate just for we're, we're okay something like that we're fine and send a text and uh, that's the best way to communicate so uh, with a phone if it's working but yeah get your ham license and it's important you can look it up um, and, and that's why it's so important but that's all I've got um, there's other things that you can look at too like um, good shoes uh, that you can you can uh, endure you know nails and things and punctures so uh, it's important to have maybe a good boot uh, after some sort of a, a tornado or, or flooding things get lost on the road but um, I've said this before if you have this type of vest put a plastic bag an extra one in there so you can put your phone in there there are some things on your phone that if, if the phone's working I think I'll show you here real quick um, but you can turn on something like um, APRS and um, APRS um, is automatic packet reporting system and so you have to be a ham radio operator and so there's there's a couple of programs on my phone here um, that I have APRS and I've got um, uh, Chase the Locator and, and uh, Spotter Network but when I put up my beaker for uh, spotter network it, it automatically uh, does the same thing here for uh, APRIS so it's a good thing to have um, and that's all I got for today so these are these are important things if you have a phone have a plastic bag have uh, one of these battery banks I've said it before and the cable um, to charge your phone with that way if your phone dies um, you know uh, you can charge your, your phone or if there's no electricity, no batteries, whatever. Um, you can turn your phone off and on uh, to conserve power and make communications later. So always think ahead, be ready, have your three days worth of food and water and uh, plan to stay warm and dry. And that's all I've got. If you have any questions, uh, contact me. And this is Certain Instructor Ron. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with other people. If you have any questions, put it in a comment um, and, and I'll respond to it. So thank you and have a great day.